When Team USA walked away from the World Cup this year without a medal, LeBron got on the phone and decided he was going to recruit some players and save the day for Team USA in the upcoming Olympics. And based on his experience in the past, it would be natural for him to assume that his presence would guarantee a gold medal. But that was 11 years ago, and he'll be close to 40 when the Olympics kick off in Paris. So let's look at his past international play to figure out if he's still the guy to bring home the gold. Back in 2012, LeBron was at his absolute peak, coming off his first NBA title with the Heat and running alongside KD, Russ, Darren Williams, AD, Mello, and the elder statesman known as Kobe Bryant. LeBron had hit a career high in three-point percentage, but on very low volume, so it still wasn't his thing and you could see defenses daring him to shoot. The defense would be happy to see him isolate on the perimeter, giving him about five feet of space, then close out with a hand up when he took the bait. This strategy was successful, as he hit only 30% of his threes, but then again, he didn't take many, averaging two and a half attempts per game. But once you see what happened when he didn't settle for the jumper, it's entirely clear why the defense was happy to see him shoot from distance. There was simply no answer for someone his size with that quickness and explosion, plus he had a variety of finishes around the hoop. My first reaction was to wonder why the help defense was so bad. No one rotating over to help protect the rim, but then I remembered that it's awfully hard to help when you've got guys like Kevin Durant out there to pass to. Or Prime Olympic Mellow, when a team goes zone to clog the paint and Anthony only needs a few inches of space to knock down the triple. But LeBron isn't that player anymore, as his isolation frequency has gone down steadily for the past six NBA seasons. And I suspect his value as a cutter playing off his teammates will be even more prevalent this time around. Watch CP3 hit him with a sham god, take all the focus, and then find LeBron cutting to the open space in the lane. Watch how KD can get four players surrounding him on the pick and roll, kick out to a pre-MVP James Harden, who attacks on the catch, which draws LeBron's man to help, and the beautiful dime gets LeBron the easy finish. Let's not forget how great he was in the high post out of horns, where you don't need to be accurate with the lob when he can do this with it and getting him in the corner to spread the floor and let CP3 and Melo do all the work to draw the help on the roll will surely open up layups for LeBron. I even found a two-footed floater he shot after KD drew the focus of LeBron's man and opened up a drive into the lane. Back in 2012, LeBron posted up a lot and was really successful for the Heat that year, so it was a little strange to see that he barely did it at all in the Olympics, and I think he's going to need to post up a lot more this time. That said, his post moves haven't evolved that much over the years, and I worry how effective the turnaround fadeaway will be against all the younger athletes flying around the court trying to contest. Of course, it's his passing out of the post that will be a huge asset, so they'll have to make it a focal point to get him down by the block with the ball, which is similar to a driver penetrating deep into the defense, and then making his passes with surgical precision to open up easy shots to teammates who have the kind of otherworldly talent that enables them to make an extremely high percentage of them. With the list of players LeBron called, it's easy to imagine these guys just lighting up the scoreboard at will. Steph has never played in an Olympics, but he did compete in the 2014 World Cup just before he became an NBA MVP for the first time, and it was remarkable how often defenders would lose him on the perimeter, and as a result, he shot 48% from behind the line that is about a foot and a half shorter than in the NBA. And this will surely be his best asset in Paris, spacing the floor and bombing away. The only issue with relying on jumpers is that the pressure to represent an entire country can be overwhelming. But you don't have to feel the pressure if you download Prize Picks and discover how much fun it is by making skill based, real money fantasy sports entries, and best of all, you're only competing with yourself. Prize Picks offers frequent discounts, bonuses, and other exciting offers. Players can enjoy community wide promotions, including Taco Tuesday and Flex Friday. I love that you can choose two or more players from any sport pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Here are my picks for opening night and it adds a whole new level of excitement to watching live as I hope Jokic can burn the Lakers for a ton of points and Curry just needs to score one. Go to prizepicks.com CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. But you have to remember, offense isn't the issue here. 
Look at the point totals from their games this year. And this is in only 40 minutes, eight minutes shorter than an NBA game. The biggest problem is that international teams are loaded with NBA talent across the board. Every year, the record is broken for number of players from outside the U.S. competing in the NBA. And it's been a big jump since the last time LeBron put on the USA uniform. In fact, most of the serious MVP candidates the NBA will see for the very near future are all foreign-born players. Every team has good guards that can handle pressure easily, and they've got chemistry from having played together so often during their developmental years. Even in 2012, I noticed some defensive issues from LeBron that didn't affect the outcomes in any meaningful manner, but make me a little bit worried considering how much older he is now and, frankly, less effective defensively than he's ever been. One issue is with closeouts. These days, in the regular season, he'll skip them all together. But in the single elimination tournament of the Olympics, every possession counts. And even back in 2012, there was some evidence that getting him into closeouts would be beneficial to the offense. Now, they tried playing him with a five alongside KD in the front court, and this was a concern that next year's team should probably avoid. While he's older and wiser now, I don't know if he's any better defending in the pick and roll. If I were an opposing coach, I'd make sure to have his man screen the ball often to see how LeBron will defend this since it didn't go that well in 2012. The other point of attack would be down low in the post. This is something LeBron has avoided as much as possible throughout his career, but smart teams would be wise to get it down low on an isolation to see if they can get an easy shot near the hoop or draw a whistle to get LeBron into foul trouble. It's always been head-scratching to me that teams didn't try to do this more, and don't get me wrong, I found some good defense down low in the block as well, but it just seems to me that this is a low-hanging fruit and teams should be looking to exploit it. The consensus after Team USA didn't medal in the World Cup this year was that they needed to upgrade the center position from a defensive standpoint, even though they had Jaron Jackson Jr. on the team, a guy who had just won the Defensive Player of the Year award in the NBA. But this analysis is not complete. Sure, it would be great to have even better rim protectors out there like Joel Embiid and Anthony Davis, and we know Embiid is committed to playing for the U.S. next year. But both these big men struggle with injuries all the time, so I just don't think Team USA can count on them being healthy next summer. But the real issue with their defense was the troubling rotations on the perimeter that led to open three-point shots. Time and again, multiple defenders would collapse to the penetration instead of just one helper, and their opponents are too good at exploiting the poor defensive spacing. In their last three losses, the U.S. allowed their opponents to shoot almost 48% from behind the arc. Imagine what will happen when the other national teams get all their top guys out there. Team USA will need all their players giving maximum effort to contain the damage. The bottom line is that going forward, if the U.S. doesn't send its A-team, chances are they won't win any of the FIBA tournaments or Olympic gold. With the dream team LeBron is assembling right now, we will be treated to an absolute show on both ends of the floor, a fitting exclamation point to LeBron's career as he nears the end, while representing this country in the best way possible. And I think we still expect them to struggle at times next summer in Paris if the other countries get all their stars on the court. But in the end, Team USA, led by LeBron James, will be too good to stop, and I'm sure we'll see them proudly wear the gold medal.